The latest builds of Unity include support for hexagonal and isometric tile maps. So in this video, we're gonna have a beginner's guide to Unity's tile map system and specifically check out the isometric and hexagonal tiles as they are new. So with that being said, buckle up, get your Unity project ready and let's check out the tile map system. Hey guys, Sam here. So we've got our Unity project open already as you can see here and I'm using Unity 2018.3 for this video and this is just a regular 2D project. And in this video, we're going to use free assets that can be downloaded online that are created by Kenny and you can see them here. So first and foremost, we got the hexagon tiles pack by Kenny and then we have the isometric one by the same author. I'll also be linking all of the assets we're using in this video in the description box under show notes so you can grab them if you want to use them. He's also got some other assets that look really nice so definitely check him out. So obviously this video is going to be a beginner's guide to the hexagonal tile map system and the isometric one. However, the thing is, if you haven't used tile map as a whole, the system itself, you're totally fine because we're gonna have a beginner's guide on that too because both of these systems actually use the tile map system as a foundation. And both of these systems are actually just extending the tile map system so you can draw more stuff into your scenes instead of creating whole new features. So you're basically using tile map anyway. But now let's get started. So first things first, we're gonna go to game object and then create a 2D object which is going to be a hexagonal point top tile map. So as you can see, we have hexagonal point top tile map and then flat top tile map. And the difference between these is that point top is almost like 2.5D where you can see a little bit more, almost like a 3D kind of tile. However, flat top is literally just top down. So it's just going to be 2D. And because of that, I think we're just gonna go with a point top tile map for now. So let's go ahead and create that. And now you'll see a new grid game object in your hierarchy. So if we click on it, you can see that we have this pattern, AKA the hexagon drawing board basically um, in our scene. And this is where you basically do draw the, the map itself of hexagon tiles. However, we haven't obviously enabled the window itself yet. So if we just click, it's not going to draw. So what we do is we go to window and then browse down to 2D and then open up the tile palette. And so this window is where you locate all of your palettes, which are basically a set of tiles you add into your, your scene, which we're going to do obviously. And we also have a few buttons here, as you can see at the top of this window, which we are going to be covering, but we need a few tiles before so we can actually utilize these. So let's go ahead and create a new palette and we can actually name this palette I guess just Saiku's palette, or maybe join Discord. <laughs> just, you know, just a little bit of shameless plug. I mean, who doesn't do that? <laughs> and you can see that the grid is automatically set to rectangle, and we wanna change that to hexagon. And we're obviously using a point top tile map, and we can leave the cell size to be on by automatic. Now let's go ahead and create this. So as you can see, it's first and foremost gonna ask you, where do you wanna create this palette in? And I feel like the hexagon tiles folder is pretty good for this. So we're just gonna go ahead and select folder. And there we go. So we have a joint Discord palette now inside of our project tab. And as you might have already realized, in the tile palette window, it now says drag tile, sprite, or sprite texture assets here. And all of these assets it's asking for are obviously found in these folders. So we're gonna open up the hexagon tiles by Kenny folder, and then we'll enter PNG. Also, let me just resize this a little bit, scale it down so it doesn't like blow up the whole screen. <laughs> and now in the PNG folder, we're gonna go to tiles, and you can see that we have a few folders here, and obviously depending on what asset you're using, it's going to change up. But for this one, I think we can go to terrain and then we might just pick dirt. And all of these look really nice. And you can see that we have a few sprites already. So the thing is, these are just PNG files. And if you click on one of these, you can see that the texture type is set to default. So if we drag this in here, it's not gonna accept it. The window is just going to refuse it because it's not set as a sprite. However, if we, for example, go to this dirt right next to it, we can actually see that it's set to be Sprite 2D and UI. And this one is obviously going to be accepted. So when you drag it in, you can see this little uh, hexagon tile map kind of appear in this window too. So 
This doesn't really matter, it's just kind of where you want to place this tile. So let's place it here. And now it obviously wants to create the tile asset for us. So we're just gonna go ahead and say, we don't really have to play around with the name, which is the good part. And there we go. So now we have this tile, which we can use to draw in our scene. So before we do anything further, I just wanna quickly mention, as you can see, we currently have a brush icon toggled here, which is the button that I was talking about to you before. So this is going to allow you to draw anywhere on the tile map. So we also have a move tool, which we can use to move tiles. And we also have a select tool, which we can use to select the tiles we wish to move or edit or whatever we might want to do. We also have a rectangle tool. So basically this is going to paint a filled box with active brush. So what this means, I just read that little toolbox there, <laughs> cheating, but hey, I mean, so the way this works is you basically pick your tile you wish to paint and then you can just drag across the map. But we obviously don't wanna do that. And we also have the pick tool, which let's say you draw a bunch of different tiles onto your map right here, and then you wanna pick one of them. You can basically just hit this tool and then click on the tile you wish to pick, and it's automatically going to enable the brush tool with that tile. And we also have an erase tool, which you can use to erase the tiles you paint. And last but not least, we also have a flood fill tool. And there you go. So that is the tile map system itself for you in a nutshell, all right? This is just a beginner friendly tutorial, but yeah, this is, this is basically how you get started with tile map. But now let's get into some painting. So I'm going to pick my brush tool and I will just paint a little bit here. Now the thing is, as you can see, actually, let me leave the spot open because it makes it more obvious. So if I zoom in here, you can see that the it's kind of overlapping the grid. You know what I mean? Like, for example, this tile that I paint here is not exactly inside of its borders of the tile map itself. The hexagon grid line is still inside of the tile, which we probably don't want to. This is not going to damage your game in any means. It's just something that we might want to fix. And the way you fix it is actually pretty easy. So you can go to the grid game object and in here you can see that we have a cell size which is set to one by one. And we can increase these values and see how these actually change. So the thing is, I'm actually just kind of looking up on this one because it's more obvious to realize um, how big this value has to be. So we can actually just increase and you can see that the grid outline is now heading together with this, uh, with this tile itself. So we're gonna do the same thing with Y and see when it actually hits the outline. So let me just increase that a little bit more and you can see that this is a very good value. So 1.2 by 1.37. And if we increase this furthermore, you can see that they kind of have this space in between them. So if you're creating that kind of game, you can actually play around with these values and see if you can find something that suits your game. But the old value, this one is perfectly fine for me because obviously this just works perfectly fine with the tiles. One more thing that I love about the tile map system in Unity is the fact that let's say we wanna add these, all of these tiles at once, right? Well, we can do that. So you just basically highlight every single tile you wish to add. And as long as there are sprites in the texture type, so you just drag them into the window here and you can see that it's automatically going to highlight all the tiles that are going to be used within here. And just the same thing here. So it's creating the asset files that are necessary for these tiles. So go ahead and select the folder. You don't really have to play around with the value or rather the folder destination. If you don't want to, um, there's no need for it. And now you can see that we have these added. So I can just highlight this one and start painting. And it's obviously going to apply through the same cell size, which is really good. So there we go. You can now start painting a little bit and create your own hexagon tile maps for your hexagon games, which is really neat. One more thing that I just wanna cover quickly before getting into the isometric tile system is the fact that you can see that inside of our grass folder, these are all set to be default in the texture type because these are just PNG files and not sprites. So if we wanted to add, let's say, for these four, right? Or maybe even these five, I really like the cliff one. <laughs> so we just basically wanna add these. So what we do is we highlight every single one of them, go to click where it says default and pick Sprite 2D. 
and then we browse all the way down in the inspector window and hit apply. And after it processes, obviously you're gonna have these transparent backgrounds in comparison to the black ones. So we can now basically drag these into our window here and the same routine here, just select the folder and boom. So you got all of your tiles you wanted to add inside your tile palette. I'm definitely not even close, remotely close to releasing a game if my level design looks like this. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, and also just before we move on, one more thing, okay, one more thing. Um, so if you wanna add more and more tiles and maybe even like props and trees and specific stuff and you wanna categorize them, you can do so by actually just creating a new palette um, by basically clicking on join Discord which link is in the description, just so you know. And then you can simply pick create new palette. And this is the same routine, so you just pick a new name. So if I wanted to add more rocks into my tiles, but I just have like a bunch of new rocks that I wanna use, I can just call this rocks or give it any name I want to. Pick the grid type to be hexagon for this scenario and then point top, automatic, and boom. Oh, and also boom. <laughs> and obviously at any time you can switch between the two different palettes you have, depending on how many you wanna have. But now let us go ahead and quickly cover the isometric tile system too. This should probably give you a very good overview of how the system works and how tile map system itself works as a whole, but I still wanna cover isometric, so I'm not click plating with my title. <laughs> so let me just scale this down a little bit. So we actually do not have to close this window because this is the tile palette window, which is like the main window, the mother window where everything goes through. So the only thing we need to do in this case is either create a new scene by going to file, new scene, or we can just disable or remove the grid game object. So uh, for, my, for my case, I guess we can just disable this for now. I don't really have the need of like deleting it. And right away, you can see that it disables this grid view inside of our scene window. So now we're gonna go back to game object and then we'll enter 2D. And this time we're gonna pick isometric tile map. And now you can see that we have one more grid in our scene. And this one, I'm actually just gonna rename this to isometric grid. There we go. Oh, and actually something that I realized. So if we pick the isometric grid now, you can see that we have no grid in our scene window. And that is because right now it kind of doesn't really read two different types of grids or multiple types for that matter. So you basically have to have one grid system in your scene. So we simply have to completely remove the other grid that we had. So if we just delete this, you can see that we have a beautiful isometric tile um, grid basically in our scene window, which we can use to draw now. <laughs> it's still wanting to draw the hexagon tiles. <laughs> so obviously let's go ahead and change that. So we're gonna go to rocks and then we'll create a new palette. And this one, I'm just gonna call it isometric tiles. And we're gonna click on grid. And this time around, we're gonna pick isometric. And we can also leave the cell size to be automatic as well. Let's go ahead and create this. And the same routine, just select the folder. And there we go. So we start from zero again. Uh, we basically just drag tiles and sprites into this window here. So now let me just unfold this folder because we're not gonna need hexagons anymore. And this time around, we're gonna enter the PNG folder of the isometric tiles directory. And you can see that we have a bunch of different isometric tiles in here that we can use. I feel like we might just, uh, let me find it. Yeah, this one. So let's just go ahead and convert this into a sprite and then go ahead and apply, and there we go. So now I'm just gonna drag this and drop it into the window. And same thing again, so just save the asset. And there you go. So you have your grass asset, uh, your first isometric tile in your game. So congratulations on that. So now if you select it, you can see that we can paint it into onto our scene, which is really nice. Actually now, let's go ahead and add these four into our tile map too. So we're gonna highlight all of them and then we'll pick to convert them into sprite and obviously apply so that we apply the changes. And now we can just drag them in here, select folder, and there you go. So we have all our tiles now in the window. So that is pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to leave it very basic and at the gist of it so we don't really go way too in depth. 
But if you want a in-depth tutorial in the future to see on this channel, definitely let me know in the comment section down below and I'll make a video out of that. Speaking of which, if you want to see more videos, make sure to subscribe to the channel to stay up to tune for new content. And also give this video a thumbs up because it really supports me a lot. And also it makes it very obvious for me to see what kind of content you guys like to see. And if you enjoyed this channel overall, make sure to check out our Patreon page, which is linked in the description box of this video, which is basically a page and a service which you can use to support me on a monthly basis. So yeah, with that being said, I'm gonna be very active in the comment section of this video, so definitely leave a comment down below, whatever it says, I'm fine with it. And also, I'll be active in the Discord server and maybe even join the voice chat tonight. So I look forward to seeing you in the comment section and in our Discord server. Thanks for watching, until next time. I would also like to give a huge shout out to Richard Stance, Cupola, and every other Patreon we have had this month. You guys are awesome.